and the game begins. Tundra versus Gaming Gladiators, two teams who are sitting at the top of the table currently, Prepare top the of the battle. group, and they are going to head off against each other to secure the top one stop, uh, the top one spot in this group B. A five-man smoke by Gaming Gladiators, just trying to put the vision. One is already set up near the staircase by Quinn. Where do we have the the second word should be in the hand of the snap? Fire. No, it is actually in the hands of the bat rider. It's not. Where's the second observer? Did they place it already? Oh, they did place it onto the cliff already, on uh, the ancient area. What about Tundra? Where do they have their vision set up? One deep in the jungle, in their own jungle, and the second ward is still to be the placed. They will be able to find Nightfall, who would be able to walk away. The smoke does break, and uh, he is able to walk away to the safety of his tier two, uh, tier one tower. And then, yeah, White Mon coming in uh, with uh, the backup information. Does not have any point as such leveled up currently. Starting of the game, where are the bounty runes going to go to? We might be looking at some fight happening in the top bounty rune area. Um, yeah, he's been clipped right at the starting of the game. Ace coming in with the goods is able to go ahead and clip uh, Nightfall, and it is going to be three runes for the side of Gaming Gladiators and the on, only one going in the hands of uh, Tantra. Uh, though there was Tofu lurking around in the area, did not have his stun available as such. So, yeah, it is going to be. Well, Nightfall, who is able to make it securely to his lane without losing his life, though he did lose his teleportation scroll. That's minus 100 gold for the Morphling right at the start of the game. But, yeah, it is still a pretty decent start. Three runes going into the pockets of Gaming Gladiators. A pretty decent start for them in the starting stages when we're looking at the lanes, which is White Mon on position 5 Phoenix, paired along with Nightfall on position 1 Morphling, going up against Ace and Tofu on uh, Snapfire and Magnus. Nightfall should be able to form pretty decently for himself, though there would be a lot of harassment coming in from Tofu. Whitemon as a hero would be able to provide a lot of harass damage himself with the Fire Spirits coming into the picture. Does have the Fire Spirits leveled already. This is the, just the default one he goes for majority of the times. So with the Fire Spirits would be able to do dish out a decent chunk of damage onto these heroes. And the lower he is, the more damage he is doing to the heroes nearby, his vicinity. This is what we have in the top area of the map. Uh, in the mid lane, it is going to be a Puck going up against Lina. So, so far, so good for the Lina. Is Lorenov is actually owning the mid lane with 7 last hits and 3 denies. Wherein we are looking at Gwen with 5 and 0. So, a lane which is definitely going in the hands of Lorenov currently. Things can change though. Uh, in this mid lane, anytime both of these heroes have the potential in order to bring the other one down, be because both of these heroes are high damage dealing heroes, specifically Lorenov on the Lina, would be dishing out a decent chunk of damage once he has more levels in his arsenal. Thermal Runaway is uh, the facet he did go for, which does provide him with the stacks of uh, what is that? Uh, fairy, uh, yeah, fairy souls. Whenever he commits the Laguna Blade. Would be able to grab one Wisdom Rune for himself. It is Tofu who is going to go down. And yes, White Mon comes in with the goods. Is able to get a great start of Tundra. Uh, by getting a kill on a position. Oh, it's four Snapfire. But nonetheless, it is uh, the first blood. Which has gone down already in this game. By killing a uh, White Mon with the kill. A pretty decent one to have at that. The golden experience is always appreciated a lot. By the Phoenix. And Morphling does get a bit of extra time in order to go ahead and farm up his items. Quinn getting aggressive with uh, level 3 now has gone with 2 points in Illusory Orb and 1 point in Face Shift. Face shift. Night LSA connection coming in from Lorenov but yeah, Quinn is not going to be in any danger whatsoever. Though Lorenov is leading in terms of the levels just uh, basis on the denies he has been able to get in the lane. So doing a decent job. Uh, While well in the bottom area, we are looking at some aggression. We, though we have not spoken about this lane whatsoever. As of now, we are looking at 33 on his Tide Hunter with Saxa as position 4 Shadow Demon. Going up against Watson on his position 1 Terror Blade. And uh, Celery would be the position 5 Bat Rider. This lane should be, well, pretty decent for 33. 
he is not faced by too much damage which is thrown out by the terror blade he can always go ahead and dispel the damage coming out from uh, the bat rider as well since he does have one point in uh, the cr in fact he has two points in the kraken shell uh, so that dispel is going to be activated whenever he takes a certain chunk of damage coming on to him a very handy skill to have and should be doing okay. Magnus, in the meantime, falling low on HP. It is going to be aggression shown by Nightfall, but eventually not able to get any kill in return. A nice bit of pull coming in from White Mon as well. Securing more last hits for Nightfall in this top area of the map, wherein Magnus is going to be left high and dry. Does not have, well, does have a Tango running, but with the damage coming in from White Mon, they will have to be careful. These fire spirits do a decent chunk of damage. Is he able to get a kill on Tofu with the fire spirits? He's actually able to own the top area of the map. Now, second kill going into the hands of White Mon. Coming in the good spot side of Tantra in this game. Uh, is doing a decent job. Already has got two kills for him the, himself in the lane. Is sitting very close to and is it going to be the Magnus? Ace falling low on HP. Fire spirits still on cooldown for another nine seconds. Would not be able to get that. But White Mon still really happy the way his lane has been progressing so far wants to get more aggressive is trying to go back no taking a lot of tower hits in the process so we'll have to back away eventually but the fire spread doing a decent chunk of damage is he just going to die he's just going to die dude another fire spread disconnected ace is going to ace is donzo and it's three kills already for the freaking phoenix in the top area of the map where he's able to finish off the uh Magnus one more time. He did go ahead and lose his kill into the hands of Tofu. But again, it is a brilliant start for this Phoenix in the top area of the map. Wherein he's already able to secure three kills in the top lane, securing that lane for the Morphling. Morphling is going to be so happy with this Phoenix currently. He might not kiss him, but at least a tip is certainly deserved by Phoenix. Now, Leonov did go ahead and commit with his Laguna Blade onto the park. Quinn does have enough uh, health in the Tikiti in order to go ahead and survive that, but... All in all, the mid lane has been comprehensively won by Lina. 39 last hits, 12 denies compared to the puck with 25 last hits, only 2 denies. Yeah, Lauren Hoffa has been able to do a decent job at it in the early stages for the side of Tundra as well. So, uh, right off the bat, they are off to a very good start in this game. And Tundra and GG are going to be playing a little bit of the catch-up in this uh, bottom lane for sure. Phoenix did go ahead and make the rotation, did go ahead and provide a bottle refill to, to the Lina maybe. Uh, he does have an arcane rune to work with and a quite big stack which uh, Lorenov is going to claim for himself. He should be progressing towards nicely towards his boots of travel. 33, low on HP, does have the healing lotus and 11, um, uh, what, 11 charges of magic wand. Should be okay here. Not uh, Should not be in any specific threat of dying unless a big rotation is being made which does not seem to be the situation as of now. Uh, there is level 6 on Quinn. Uh, we might be looking at more rotations coming out from the mid laner. But uh, not at the moment. He just seems to be pretty stagnant in the lane and wants to at least complete his... Well, not completing as of now. Just waiting for more farm to come as well. Would be able to get a nice pull, a nice stack onto this big creep camp. And uh, where Buck would be really happy with that. Lena can go ahead and come in and steal the snack for themselves in case if they choose to do so because they did have that idea that stuck I, I saw a ping there by Tundra in order to intimate his team that the uh, attempt is going on Ace uh, again in the line of fire he's dead he's dead he's dead again and guess who gets the kill it is White Mon uh, who gets another kill onto the Magnus so not giving a lane whatsoever 7 minute wisdom runes did spawn it was evenly split when one was taken by Shadow Demon and the other one was picked up by Tofu. So two Wisdom Runes being traded between both of these teams. And uh, well, the aggression is going to continue. Quinn is going to go ahead and commit with his Dream Coil in the mid lane. Are they able to get a kill onto the Lorenov? By the looks of it, no. They are just going to go ahead and commit with the Laguna Blade onto Quinn. Wherein Quinn might be finding himself and dude, White Maw and somebody tip him. Saksa does. Saksa does tip him. <laughs> Uh, they have to, right? They have to. He has just been a beast in the early stages for the side of gaming gladiators and uh, just bringing them down to their knees. Already the kill score is 5 to 1. And guess who has the most kills on the map currently? It's Phoenix. 
with all the five kills on the side of Tundra being claimed by White Mon in the early stages of the game has completely changed the uh, way the game number one is kind of being looked at currently is moving over trying to get the vision of the stacks as well uh, would be able to go ahead and uh, pull them off with the, his uh, fire spirits what three points in fire spirits he's farming their stacks alone and a three-man rotation had to be made for him to stop doing that so a lot of space has been given to the rest of the heroes 33 as we are looking at it is already approaching his level 8 does have a soul ring completed L only level 6 on uh, Watson currently does not have any point in Sunder of course 18 points in magic one charges since it is at uh, Tide Hunter he's going up against more action white mon is just in everywhere he is in middle of all the action happening across the map while we were speaking we just took our eyes off the Terrorblade dude and immediately was the ravage even committed Ravage was committed. They did go ahead and commit with the Ravage and they are able to bring down Watson in the bottom area of the map who was kind of standing here solo trying to get his farm up. Rotation made by Lorenov did ensure that they are able to pick, pick off the position one from Gaming Gladiators. Well in the lead now on the side of Tundra who are leading the scorecard with 6-1 to one and a 2,000 network lead for themselves at 9 minutes into the game. Aghanim Scepter, uh, BOTs completed on Lorenov, would be able to get another stack of this uh, of this big camp. Is he? Yes, he does get that stack. Would be able to come back and clear it off and work nicely towards his Aghanim Scepter as his next choice of item. Though I have seen this build before, it really did not work out in the game which was done, but Lena did have a horrendous time in the leading stages. But this time around, Lorenov has had a pretty decent start to his game. And with the backup coming in from Shadow Demon, which saved his life in the mid lane from not going down, has been able to continue with the momentum since both. All of the three cores from the side of Tundra are in the lead currently, with uh, 5,400 against the name of Lena, 5,000 for the Tidehunter, and 4,800 on the Morphling. Though uh, it is uh, the rest of the heroes who are from the Radiant team from Game Gladiators are not doing that bad. And uh, I'm sorry about that. People, a nice big five-man dotation made by Gaming Gladiators to the top area of the map, wherein they were able to clean off the position one, uh, which is Morphling from the side of Tundra. Yeah, I really feel sad for missing that kill. Was a very important kill, which uh, the side of Gaming Gladiators were able to get. And as a return, they, uh, as a reward, they also would be able to get the top tier one tower for themselves in return. Is uh, Tantra able to fight back? Uh, they do have the Siege Creep uh, running for them. A lot of rotations are being made by the side of Gaming Gladiators. They want to defend this tower, but I don't think they can fight against 33 currently. They do, just don't have the damage in their tank. In, in order to fight off against this beast, is just going to work into his Pipe of Insight as his first choice of item. Action happening in the bottom area of the map. Lorenov did go ahead and make the rotation. Sunder was committed by Terrorblade onto Lorenov who will have to back away. Still the amplified damage, you know, it's it's just the stacks coming in from the Fairy Souls. Um, are they able to get a catch onto any hero? Yes, they would be able to catch the Batrider who is definitely going to take a tumble, trying his best in order to survive that engagement. Uh, the LSA disconnect. Lina is being bashed by Roshan, so we'll have to be careful. Eventually, Saksa would be able to come and claim no Saksa is going off in wrong direction Saksa not there Saksa not there Celery is going to live does not have a TP available to work with Saksa knows <laughs> the spidey senses did tickle uh, for Sansa uh, Saksa well it is uh, going to be the lasso which is committed <laughs> by the bat rider so a two and pro fight and <laughs> deny from Roshan Saksa does go down eventually and <laughs> guess what Celery is just going to deny himself as well. So a nice tip coming out from Celery onto Saksa wherein both these heroes do not get any uh, experience or gold and Roshan is going to be a rich Roshan. Does he get any does he get any gold or buffs by killing? No, he does not. Should be another another addition to Doda. Just go ahead and buff up the freaking Roshan. While Loranov is going to find himself um, no, Loranov is okay, it's just going to farm stacks though it is the tide hunter which is going to be a big kill which was taken away and who was it okay it was tofu who was able to pick up the kill for themselves and the tide hunter was farming away in the radiant jungle so nice uh, bit of a 
fight back coming in from gaming gladiators they have been able to stabilize the game to a large extent how the initial stages of the game went and now with the kill score of six to three um, in the side of tundra the gold there is no gold advantage for either of these teams the game stands at pretty much even with what 84 percent win probability of tundra how is that possible with less than a 1000 network lead um, is it the morphling effect which is uh, kind of happens is it right 84 percent for tundra cannot be true dude I, I really don't agree with that um just because it is a morphling they're going up against it, it could be close to 70 yes it's is what i could agree with but 84 just seems completely insane gaming gladiators do have a lot of fight left in them their terror blade is doing decently well um is already at what uh 1,400 uh, gold away from his uh, manta style and has already committed with his uh, metamorphosis would not be a there are no stacks as yet to be taken so we'll have to be happy with whatever he's getting on the map at level 10 did go with uh, the talent of the 10 percent conjure image damage so the reflection Warriors is going to be pretty annoying for the side of tundra esports to deal with though the tide hunter is a kind of a hero who really does not mind anything hitting him so should be fine in that regard and where is uh, lauren of going he's searching for heroes currently by the looks of it is uh, under the effect of the invisibility rune so would not be tracked by the side of gaming gladiators but there's nothing to be found here uh, all of the gaming gladiators heroes are happy farming away to glory on all of their heroes what are the itemizations we are looking at we went with echo saber on ace instead of the blink dagger uh, still working towards it 900 more gold needed and the uh, gaming gladiators will have that form of initiation activated Quinn is working towards his Blink Dagger as well, does have his Witch Blade completed already. Still about 1300 gold away from it, so quite needs quite some time in order to power that item. These are the item timings we are looking at from Gaming Gladiator's uh, perspective. Manta Style and Shard, of course, uh, Trial Blade does get the Demon Seal, Demon Seal, which enables him to farm much faster uh, throughout the jungle and the lanes when he just get that gets that additional movement speed uh, it is going to be a lasso which has been committed on the tide hunter not exactly sure but a nice two-man rp coming in from ace and now the ravage has been committed by 33 and the fight is over uh, though it is the mortimer kisses being thrown from downtown but the pipe of inside is completed on tide that is not even going to tickle it was not even a tickle now it is going to be uh, nightfall who has turned himself into the magnus and they are going to be chasing after celery lsa does connect that means the damage outward is more than enough uh, it is low enough who was able to come in with the laguna blade finish that kill off so off laner and his support going down for the side of gaming gladiators and tundra are not going to lose any hero in the process even though the big ultimate the big team fight um, skill from the side of gaming gladiators was committed rp eventually not going to matter much since the ravage uh, did prove out to be more kind of capable skill or threatening skill when gleaming gladiators did end up losing that engagement altogether now a 3000 network lead for tundra what are the objectives they are looking at in terms of itemization the Aganum scepter is only about 490 gold away for lauren of what does the Aghanim do on the Lena? Grants Lena unobstructed movement and increases the smell damage and magic resistance. Okay, so Grants Max Fairy Soul stacks on activations and this Luna becomes basically a Ferrari who would be speeding all across the map and uh, basically becomes a second Night Stalker, right? Kind of a thing with just more damage in her arsenal. Saksa is going to be found. Let's go ahead and commit with the... Uh, the, the disruption in order to get away from the terror blade and now the search is going to be on ace is searching for the shadow demon currently would not be able to find him and saksa is just going to hide in the trees for the minute and get back into the safety of his own tier one tower so they would not be making any aggressive moves as such and uh, while well, nightfall is still decently farming away a bit of a slow time in this game when we are looking at both of these teams farming up their items white mon with uh, the most dreamiest of starts to this game uh, did get what five kills at the beginning itself uh, the six uh, well the 18 minute rune does go in the hands of Lorenov, who was able to uh, get the shield rune for himself by the looks of it no he got the illusion rune so a nice dispel in the hands of the lena with the agonim scepter completed 
um, and uh, well, the flame cloak uh, does provide Lena with a lot of movement speed and um, unobstructed vision is something Alina yeah, would be very happy with is going into the BKB as her next choice of item which will enable her to get more farm on the map uh, while that is happening 33 was able to claim a kill onto Celery who was just farming away in the area just a support trying to push the waves in on the side of gaming gladiators they are going to wait for Watson to come online still working towards his Manta style quite some distance away from it uh, needs about what 100 more gold away and he would have his Manta style completed which does go ahead and propel his farm to a certain degree where he would be able to catch up with the rest of the heroes on the side of Tundra and how much impact is it going to have in the later stages of the game is uh, what we will be finding out soon enough though there is uh, the Empower which is enabling Watson to farm much faster in the jungle he's under vision though I did see an observer ward being placed by Tundra in the area no there is no observer ward here. Nightfall has completed his Manta style. A bit of commotion in the top area of the map. We are looking at a three-man smoke being committed by Tundra. There is no blink on the tide as yet. No, he does not have a blink. But still a three-man rotation. They are able to get their grab on... Uh, fuck, fuck. Is he... Uh, LSA does not connect. He's able to walk away successfully and uh, blink away to safety on uh, Quinn. But still, he is being chased. Does go ahead and commit with another illusory orb. Would be able to make it to the safety. And with a lot of backup coming in, a lot of heroes are going to come as backup and uh, make sure that uh, their buck stays alive. And Quinn would be able to walk out of that gang as return. Uh, it is going to be Tundra who are trying to claim the tier 2 tower. Of course, uh, it is 33 who would be tanking it um, all the way through. They have diverted their attention towards... Uh, it's already dead. Uh, Mortimer Kisses were committed by the Snapfire. Not going to be... <laughs> uh, not going to be useful. The 33 just stands beneath the uh, freaking Mortimer Kisses dude. Really, this is... Uh, 33 as it speaks. He's not really not scared of what gaming gladiators are throwing him at him at the moment and just stands there and that was a big ultimate committed by gaming gladiators a big team fight ultimate but again for not though we have not seen any egg usage as yet uh, coming in from white mon but this game has been heavily favoring the side of tundra since the get-go stages both the wisdom runes were picked up by Tundra, one by Lena, one by the Tide Hunter, and there is no response currently coming in from Gaming Gladiators. And uh, Loranov is just happy farming his way through. Uh, there is a killing spree coming in from uh, White One. Where in, the, where in the hell did he find the bat? Or oh, the bat that had come in in order to pick up the wisdom rune. So White Mon able to grab that kill for himself, and as well as the shard going into the pockets of Saksa. So all of a sudden. Uh, though the network lead was not very prominent as of now, but we are looking at an 8,000 net worth advantage all of a sudden on the side of Tundra. And now the win probability is, is making more sense with an 86% win probability on Tundra in case if the game is con going to continue in the same trajectory. Um, 33. Uh, he's dead. Uh, he is definitely dead. Uh, surrounded by four heroes from the side of gaming gladiators. Eventually, they are able to bring down the watermelon getting 1,005 or 1,050 gold for it. Yeah, 1,061 gold is what they achieved on the side of Gaming Gladiators by getting a kill onto the Tide Hunter. Nice bit of revenge coming in from GG, but smoke being committed by Tantra. They want a fight. There is no Dream Coil on the puck, which was committed to get a kill onto the Terror Blade, but they are going to be leading the charge. Snapfire is dead. Just like that, really did not stand a chance whatsoever. Morphling this time around has gone with the phylactery build. Did not go into his butterfly, which he was queuing up earlier. But looking at the state of the game, he's just going for the shotgun build and would be working into his Kanda as his next choice of item. Demonic Purge, Celery on the high nightfall on the high ground. Styling over the poor Bat Rider is able to get that kill. So two supports dead on the side of Gaming Gladiators who are playing with a big disadvantage 
in this game currently already with a deficit of 7000 and it is going to be Roshan the next objective Quinn did go ahead and TP in aggressively using the twin gate is Quinn going to live no they are going to be chasing after Quinn uh, there is 33 all right on the chase already it is uh, going to be the dream coil which was committed with the demonic word silence coming in Quinn is dead 51 seconds without Quinn on set of gaming gladiators with the amplified damage rune on the Lina. Yeah, this this is a dead Roshan and there is no fight back. They don't have the team fight like uh, Tundra does and they would not be wanting to contest. So more farming going on on the side of gaming gladiators while Tundra are going to pick up the second life on their Lina by the looks of it. Yes, they give it to the uh, no, they give it to the Morphling rather. Mid lane is successfully defended by Nightfall. Are they able to get anything out of it? By the looks of it, yes, they will be able to get a kill onto the Batrider. Uh, no. Shadow Demon is actually able to walk away. Was it the lasso committed? The lasso was even committed, dude. That's so much bad luck for gaming blood gladiators. They must be feeling so unlucky currently. They could have got the kill onto uh, the Shadow Demon but he was able to survive that gank attempt courtesy the glimmer cape he uh, had already purchased so a dominating street coming in uh, for uh, nightfall in this game and uh, well the terror blade can just throw in his illusions and back away from the engagement no way they are going to take get into a fight against the side of gaming gladiators ace is uh, going to find himself no ace is walking away but tidehunter does come in with an aggressive blink and the rest of the heroes from uh, the side of gaming gladiators have to go back to the base to be in safety otherwise they would have been just dead the lane is okay the creeps just showed up so this tier 2 tower would be taken down by tundra without any problems and uh, batrider is just going to go ahead and shove the top wave in while the mid lane is shoved in by the terror blade illusions and terror blade himself bombing in the jungles of the dire team while his tier 2 tower was brought down successfully nightfall is going to the top area of the map now he has become a beast altogether with his kanda completed no hero is safe from nightfall and he can look to get extremely aggressive on the map still the chase by lauren off onto the bat rider but the bat rider pretty speedy pretty speedy hero in his own regard is able to walk away did he have the vision where did it he blinked away he blinked away to safety so celery will be able to walk away from an engagement uh, wasting some time from on the ages on the side of tundra but it's, it's just a little bit of time wasted not a majority of it they did go ahead and claim the bottom tier 2 and the mid tier 2 tower so the only objective they have remaining on the outer map for tundra is going to be the top lane and uh, well nightfall he's just switching into heroes now uh, creating more illusions by becoming the terror blade in illusions um, more action in the mid lane they were able to get a grab onto the snap fire and illusions after illusions are being created terror blade illusion being created by the shadow demon and the, sh uh, the terror blade illusions are going to find themselves weaker uh, yep. and uh, they're just the illusions doing a chunk of damage onto the tower not so much but it is a chip, some tip, uh, chip damage with the which the tower has already taken Top tower is under attack. The top tier 2 tower also takes a tumble, so there are no top tier 2 tower towers remaining fallen. for the side of Radiant's gaming gladiators in this game, and they are going to just be playing for their high ground now. That's the only objective which uh, Tundra needs to take. Uh, well, even the high ground is not safe. Uh, Nightfall, with Radiant's all the damage in the world, with fallen. all the health in the world, is not scared of anything which the side of gaming gladiators have to offer has already brought down um, the melee barracks so the creep wave is always going to be pushing and in, into the side of gaming gladiators in the top lane are they going to get a well they did go ahead and commit with the ravage and are they able to survive or the life of the tight hunter uh, by the looks of it 33 still surviving no 33 eventually takes a tumble now it is the lasso 
which has been committed, but the BKB was also committed by Lorenov, so he would be able to walk away from the engagement. In return, they have already lost the kill, um, the death on the Batrider. There is the Blink RB, which is still being threatened by Ace at the moment. Is he able to get a successful connection? By the looks of it, no. Uh, it is Quinn who is going to be chasing after the Zero. Mind you, there is also, well, ouchies. Yeah, Quinn was able to come and get that kill onto the Phoenix. Now it is going to be aggressive. Aggression being shown by the side of Gaming Gladiators. They were able to get a successful disruption onto the Shadow Demon on himself. But eventually, eventually, uh, it is going to be Gaming Gladiators who come up with a victory. Successfully defending their mid-tier 2 tower. Though they did have to commit with uh, a lot of their ultimates. RP was not committed. RP was really not committed in that engagement. And without that, they are able to finish off three heroes for the side of Tundra, including the Tide Hunter and the two supports, though they were not able to get the two big kills, which is going to be Lorenov and as well as Watson, who were, well, not Watson, I, my word, Nightfall, who were able to walk away. The Ravage was committed by the Tide Hunter, but he was the hero who was gone upon, right? So, uh, him losing his life in the starting of the engagement, that means that Tundra will have to back away, which they were trying to in process, losing another two supports. Not the biggest of losses uh, for the side of Tundra. They only lost about 1,000 gold. In that previous engagement, Dream Coil has been committed by the Buck. Uh, is he going to be useful? Yes, it is going to be. They are able to finish off um, the Phoenix one more time. Quinn is chasing after 33. Not, the, of course, the easiest of heroes to bring down. So he's going to be leading the charge for the side of Tantra. Gaia's middle tower is under attack. Still with a 7,000 network lead on side of Tantra, and they are not. Uh, walking with an Aegis anymore, so bit of a downtime we, much, we might be looking at as the game is progressing. All that while is happening, Terrorblade is still happily farming. Is very close to the Morphling in, in terms of net worth, sitting at what, 19,000 net worth when compared to Nightfall, sitting at 21. So only a 2,000 net worth difference and between these two heroes, Lina doing not doing bad for himself at what, uh, 19,000 net worth. So both teams are catching back up. Only a 7,000 lead now. Considering we are 30 minutes into the game, uh, does um, 7,000 lead secure you the game? No, it does not. A four-man smoke committed by Tantra now. Um, all the aggression is already over. Make it make it a five-man smoke coming in with uh, Morphling joining in. Uh, they are going to head into the Roshan area. So that's where the big next big team fight is going to be coming from. It is going to be the Rosh Pit. While that is happening, we are looking at the itemization of Terrorblade with this Eye of Skadi already completed and is going to work towards the Silver Edge. So uh, this Terrorblade of this uh, Tidehunter might not be finding himself too tanky once Watson has his Silver Edge working for himself. A big pickup. How much impact is it going to have in terms of the outcome of uh, the team fight is something we are waiting for, uh, for is something which we're waiting for 21 seconds before we know when the Roshan is going to spawn with uh, the sixth uh, with the network lead decreased to 6000 uh, for the side of Tundra gaming gladiators have actually made a very big comeback in this game with the kind of the start they had it was what five kills on the Phoenix right off the bat. And after that, it has been a slow but a steady progression by the side of Gaming Gladiators who were able to keep this game alive for the highest of this duration. Have only lost once one melee barracks as of now in the top lane, which is not the worst of the losses, honestly, for uh, the side of Gaming Gladiators considering 32 minutes in. Their Terrorblade is still decently farming, has a couple of big items completed for himself, like the Silver Edge and the Eye of Skadi. So his damage output after the, using the Metamorphosis is going to be extremely high. They are trying to get a kill onto the White Mom before any commitment, uh, but it is going to be Magnus who goes down first in the engagement, courtesy Lorenov. Now Tide himself, uh, Tide Hunter finding himself to be in a lot of trouble. The Ravage was committed and Lorenov coming with the goods is able to finish off two heroes, just like that. So a bit of uh, yeah, a bit of a fight back coming in from gaming gladiators but eventually 
it is going to be Tundra who come right on top. Loranov coming in with the goods. Does have the Scythe of Voice completed. Um, so the Hex is online with only two heroes alive on the side of gaming gladiators. How are you defending your base? Do they have any buybacks? No buyback on the Terror Blade. Magnus does not have a buyback as well. So it is a three versus five situation currently. Once the second set of racks has already been brought down, White Mon working uh, with his right clicks and with the Morphling Illusions on the top set of racks and the bottom set is being achieved currently by Tundra. So not even wanting the ages, just one team fight going their way and they are able to get mega creeps on the side of Tundra. So practically this game is all but done and dusted. Uh, for uh, the diet team and they just have to complete the formalities now A chase oh my goodness the damage dude nightfall have mercy uh, No mercy being shown by nightfall there celery already losing 80% of his HP with just one hit of the adaptive strike is able to just go ahead and blink away and he is back to the safety of his own base. Yeah, otherwise he really did not stand a chance in order to stand against there. Would have definitely lost his life. Aegis is free to be picked up. Uh, would go into the hands of Morphling one more time and would be a very happy Morphling. And uh, with the Mega Creeps already underway. It is a huge team fight, dude. Uh, it is a very huge team fight. Uh, let's see what gaming gladiators are able to do. It is of course going to be the final team fight for them uh, No buybacks as such other than both the supports which is the bat rider and snap fire uh, The egg usage has not been very uh, kind of uh, uh, Prompt from the side of Tundra have not used the egg as such they have not Been required to they have been just winning these team fights Left, right, and center, and Tundra, and, and Tundra, any which ways. Now with a 15,000 network lead on Tundra against Gaming Gladiators, are they able to uh, go ahead and close out this game for themselves? Is it enough against Gaming Gladiators, against their Magnus? Does he have his Aghanims for the Horn Toss? Oh, that's what was needed. If he had the Aghanims, the Horn Toss will come into the picture and they might have, stand, they might have had a chance. Uh, but with no Horn Toss, he will have to commit with... Uh, the blink RP and then the skewer so that that would be a big commitment um, you know RP the Aghanim Scepter would have made it so much easier uh, Ace still looking to defend while the illusion is doing the chunk of the damage onto the tier 4 tower does have an Aegis he's working with with along with a butterfly MKB is it done on the TV no but he's going to come back to the base nonetheless they are losing their towers so we'll have to defend it otherwise they just lose the game and the game ends what, what are you farming for? Reflection being committed by the Terror Blade, but uh, it's not going to do anything. Smoke on the Magnus. This is where our eyes are going to be. The big play. Is Ace able to get that big RP off from Tundra in order to secure them the victory? One man RP is not going to be enough. They require at least a three man RP. Uh, but <laughs> the side of Tundra I think is very smart. They are playing it extremely strong. Look at the distance between all of these heroes. White Mon is playing so far behind 33. It's just lurking around in the area. They would be able to get a lasso onto the Morphling, who does go ahead and commit with his BKB, and that attempt is over. Uh, now, with Lina committing with her BKB, Gwen is dead. No, it is uh, Watson who was dead, but now a nice ultimate coming in from the Snap Fire was able to get a kill onto the Shadow Demon with the Dream Coil committed. They are able to get the break onto um, the, uh, the Tide Hunter who does go ahead and use his Ravage. Uh, wicked Stick on the Wicked Stick onto the Morphling. Three heroes dead just like that. It was a tie back on uh, the Terror Blade, so this game is technically over. They have not called it GG, but this is over. This has been over from the last five minutes. A nice skewer coming in from the Magnus. If they are able to drag the Morphling within, deep within their base. Do they have any further backup with lockdown? No. Uh, Nightfall is able to make for the safety of uh, the low ground and the ages. Uh, well, it's the uh, Ancient, which is in shambles. Godlike on the Morphling, who is still continuing to go ahead and bash the Ancient and eventually Eventually, it is going to be Gaming Gladiators who are going to call GG. And uh, Tundra Esports are of a victory in uh, this game against Gaming Gladiators. They would be climbing towards...